Hello everyone, I'm Dad Mishima and we're back to bring you another installment of Classic Gaming. This video covers World 3 of Super Mario Bros. 3. Now, there's more items to cover, but to save time, I will go over them as I use them in this playthrough. World 3 is a notorious water area. This world has a whopping total of 9 levels to beat before we get the challenge to balls. Also, now we get to use the frog suit, but I recommend you save that for area 3-5. Well, with that said, let's get started. These games always get the best of me, but at least we're starting to make some leeway. Alright, so we just scored a fire flower and a star. Wow, definitely need those. So in 3-1, let Mario sink to the bottom of the beginning area, collect the mushroom, then swim up and to the right. The reason you don't want to use the frog suit here is that you don't want to run the risk of getting hit and losing it. Without the frog suit, we won't be able to get to the secret in 3-5. The bloopers have a tendency to hone in and track you. Don't let them get too close. Now, I'm standing here asking myself, is this power up even worth the risk? Nah. The blooper nanny has a spread attack with his children, so quickly get away from it. Let's go up the warp pipe to finish the level. In 3-2, do your best to stay above the water since the Cheap Cheap will be attacking Mario. They will be jumping aggressively and touching the water will just slow you down. If a Cheap Cheap jumps into Mario as he's jumping, it will be defeated. This level is not bad at all. As long as you stay above the water, you should be fine. Now let's go down the warp pipe here to finish the level. In 3-3, three three, the difficulty is starting to show itself. I recommend starting this level with Fire Mario. First thing first, we need to avoid a large fish type enemy whose name is Big Bass. This guy can take out Mario by eating him. As the entire level rocks up and down, it is important that you stay above the shallow water since it will impede your movement. Big Bass can be taken out with a fireball, but another one will return soon afterwards. The blue bricks can be grabbed and thrown. Hit the brick at the left to reveal P-Block. This can be used to create a bridge made from coins as you proceed to the right. While we can't defeat Big Bass permanently, 
we can use fireballs to slow them down. Once you see the warp pipe, it means we need to enter it to finish the level. This level is a bit of a maze, but if you know where you're going, it's not bad at all. Head right. Avoid a rotor disc and drive on enemies. At the thromp section, you will start to see doors along the corridor. You want to focus on the sixth door since that's the correct path to the boss. You can grab a one up at the fifth door. Now hop up and enter the door for a boss fight. As I mentioned before, this fight is all about the timing with your jumps. So we just got the hammer item again. Make sure to hold on to it. The hammer bros can be a pain, but patience is key when fighting them. Dash 4 is not a horror level either, and it actually has a one-up trick that can be done. Use the slide here to take out the Goombas. Now we have to run full speed to make it over this section. So this area has a hidden P block. When you step on it, it grants you blue coins. Also, the pair of Goombas that release the mini Goombas can be a nightmare. In order for the one-up trick to work, we need Lakitu, and we need him to follow us back to the P-Block area. Grab a Koopa shell. Now toss it so it bounces off of the two blocks. The Koopa shell will take out Lakitu's eggs as he throws them. After the ninth egg, you will start to receive one-ups, and that's it. Now as we continue, Lakitu would do his best to give Mario his eggs. I don't think Mario liked green eggs, Lakitu. Honestly, 
The one up trick is cool in this level, but I believe the one in 3 9 is the most effective and is my favorite. The frog suit is the only way to push against the currents from the warp height. So get your frog suit ready and let's tackle 3-5. Hop into the water. You'll soon see that it's much easier to swim with the frog suit. Make sure to avoid the enemy called Big Bertha as you head to the right. They're basically the same as Big Bass but they spit out many cheap cheap while moving left and right. Also, Mario can swim faster with the frog suit by pressing the A button. And when you arrive at this warp pipe, go inside. Now hold right so you don't miss this platform while falling. Hit the big item block to collect three one-ups. Now we can head out of here. At this point, be mindful of the Gelectros, which is based on a jellyfish, I guess. Make your way to the right, and let's head for this warp pipe in the wall. Here is another auto-scrolling level. The platforms that shape like a sideways letter D would start to sink if Mario stands on them for too long. I felt like getting rid of the frog suit was necessary since it feels very clumsy on land. In levels like these, I try my best to stay as high and vertical as I can to give myself more time to save Mario if I fall. Also, the raccoon and the tanuki suit float ability works great on these type of stages. So once we see the second rotator, it means we're at the end of the level. Use the Paracoupa and jump off of it to help you reach the warp pipe. Three dash seven has a secret route. Proceed to the right. Avoid the green turtles known as spikes. These guys will spit out metallic balls with spikes. It's best to avoid them altogether if possible. At this point, let's take the alternative route. Hit the brick to expose the hidden vine. Climb it to reach the top of the level. You can grab the coins if you like, but the real focus here is at the right. Let's head back to where we climb from. Make a jump to these clouds, then jump in the center of it to reveal a music block. Now let's go to Coin Heaven. We finally made it to the secret route. There's really nothing else here but coins, and at the very end, we will receive a Lakitu's Cloud, which will allow us to skip a level on a map without playing it.
3-8 is the hardest level in World 3, in my humble opinion. Not only do we have to deal with Big Bass, we have to collect enough coins here if we want to unlock the White Mushroom House on the map. So once again, the level rocks up and down. And once again, we need Fire Mario to deal with Big Bass. Just as with level 3-3, we absolutely need to stay away from the water. In fact, treat the water as if it's lava. As you gather coins, use Mario's firepower to keep Big Bass at bay and to give yourself time to gain a proper footing. We need to collect 44 coins to unlock the White Mushroom House. Collect all of the coins here, then hop on the P block for more coins. At this point, we're basically at the end of the level. So the White Mushroom House is available on the map, but in order for us to get to it, we need to beat the second fortress located here. So this fortress is very short, and it mostly takes place underwater. In this section, Avoid the rotor disc and take out the cheap cheap as you head to the right. Now we face a new enemy. These guys are called a stretch, but they serve as more of an obstacle than a true foe. From my understanding, they can only be defeated with hammers or by using a star. Now in the boss section, it's just another day at the office. The P-Wing we just got from the White Mushroom House allows us to fly as Raccoon Mario, but through an entire level. This is very helpful, especially in the Sky World. Three dash nine is a step down in terms of difficulty, and the one up trick by far is the easiest to pull off. So first thing first, grab the Cooper shell at the beginning and take it to the right. Go past the first cannon and keep going until you reach the second cannon. Now jump on top of the cannon and release the shell to the right. Quickly hop on the upper levels while keeping the Cooper shell in sight. Finally, the shell will constantly take out the bullet bills. After the ninth bullet bill is taken out, you will start receiving extra men. Now back on track, keep going to the right. We have a new enemy to cover. It's called a bomb arm. The bomb arms can be quite sinister 
and it has a large explosive radius. Just make sure to keep your distance when it explodes. This level is not lengthy at all and we have a minor underwater section coming up. Now let's head up the warp pipe to finish the level. With that being said, we're almost finished with World 9. Alright guys, we got one more stop to make before we head to the castle. Go to the bottom of the map and use the hammer on this rock that's blocking our path. Now hop in the boat and use it to travel to the small island at the right. If you've been using the one up tricks for 99 men, then only focus on the two toad houses. If you boat ride to the right just a bit further, you'll see another toll house. And a bit further down than that is the castle. But we can only interact with it from the mainland, so let's head there now. This is where the difficulty really starts to show. The airship seems to move at a faster pace than the ones before it. There's more projectiles on the screen and there's more enemies, so we really have to step up our game in the multitask department. And as always, do the best you can to avoid cannon fire as you move towards the right. At this section, you can jump on a blue boat looking object, but your timing with your jump has to be on point. Otherwise, you run the risk of falling into the rocket engines below. So now as we cross this section, we finally arrive at the end. Now let's get ready to face Wendy Cooper in a boss battle. So, Wendy will terrorize you if you're not careful. She will shoot two rings at a time to attack the Mario Brothers. Avoid them and jump on her head. You have to jump on her head three times to score the win. So with Wendy Cooper defeated, we can now journey over to the next world. So that's it for this edition of Classic Gaming featuring Super Mario Brothers 3. I'm Dad Mishima, see you in World 4.